Hi. It has now been a week since my uh, last update video where I was a little bit in a funk. Well, it's actually a little bit over a week now. <laughs> um, I wanted to release a video right after, you know, on Thursday, so exactly one week after that, but as it turns out, I wasn't entirely over my funk. Even though I had some motivation to do things, I found it still quite hard to get going. But yeah, in, in order to sort of, you know, get back into the mood of creating things and doing something, I first had to kind of clean up my environment a little bit, um, because it was actually a li little bit of a mess, to be honest. Um, now that can be seen as another form of procrastination, right? <laughs> Procrastinating by cleaning the house instead of uh, doing what I wanted to do or wanted to focus on to actually, you know, continue the Game Boy Assembler and produce something. But I think it was kind of necessary to do that. The last few days I have been working on the Game Boy Assembler and actually rewrote a big chunk of it um, just to simplify it a little bit, um, you know, using less buffers, um, less, uh, you know, memory allocation. But essentially I got it into a good stage where I'm actually now able to compile um, very simple assembly code, which is awesome. So I can generate 32 kilobyte um, ROMs for the Game Boy. You know, some things are still a bit iffy. Um, error reporting is not quite the best. There is a few bugs that I noticed um, with how errors get reported mostly. The output sort of seems correct, at least for the little test application that I used. Um, but obviously I need some kind of mechanism to actually verify that everything works as intended, so I should probably write like a little test suit, um, you know, where I have certain input files and hard-coded output files and then blast the input files through the assembler and then just compare the output with the output files that I was expecting. That would also give me a good framework for if I want to refactor the assembler even more, which I kind of want to do because I learned a lot in the last few days and I can actually simplify this even more, which is, I mean, th this is always what's happening, right? Um, I approach something where I have no idea how to do it and just, you know, hack it out and as I sort of hack in, I realize certain mistakes I have made or things I can, I can do differently and stuff like that. So I usually go back and then refactor. I held back to refactor while I was writing, even though I noticed I could already simplify a few things because I just wanted to get it done. And yeah, and now I actually have something that's that's able to produce some some very basic ROMs, which I'm really excited for. So I could essentially start working on like a few Game Boy games if I want to. <laughs> I will explain in detail how the assembler works in like uh, a few videos, um, you know, showing a few bits and pieces of the code and how they work, and how you could actually write your own assembler if that's something you're interested in. For let's say I don't know the Nintendo Entertainment System or some different machine, you know. They're all kind of similar. Once you get the basic structures out, I think there's not much, you know, difference between them. It's, it's just a matter of figuring out the ROM layout and how it works and then the instructions that you're allowed to use. Um, of course, you could extend the assembler all the way you want with like, you know, macros and all these kind of things if, if you're so inclined, but um, Let's be honest, that is way beyond what I wanted to do. It's not like it is a commercial product or anything, it's just something for myself to play around with and, you know, I'm kind of proud with, with what I got going. But anyways, uh, let's not talk more about it, let me let me show you how it works. Okay. So as you can see, this is my main.c file. This is the only C file I have in my project. Everything else is just a header file that I'm including in this main.c file. And this is the main function. So this is all there is to it, essentially. The input file name and output file name are hard-coded at the moment. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm creating a symbols table. Now a symbols table is essentially just a hash map where I store all the necessary keywords that the parser should recognize, all the assembly instructions that you can see in the assembly file, such as LD, CP, jump, any user-defined label, such as a weight V blank, A3 point, copy tile map. Those will also be added to the symbol table as the program parses the file. The next step is to create the output ROM. Now that is essentially just a byte buffer, you know, where I allocate 32 kibs uh, immediately for the output ROM, and then everything the parser is parsing will be written into that specific buffer, which will then be written out into the file at the end. So then I'm creating the parser. Uh, there's a bunch of things happening in here. 
uh, the parser, um, actually let me open this, the parser will open the source file in a read-only mode. This is essentially just a memory map into the file. Um, I'm also initializing the tokenizer. Now a tokenizer is something like Alexa. I mean, it, it, it is Alexa, essentially it is the same thing. Uh, it will then pass a sequence of characters and essentially create a token out of it. That's why I call it a tokenizer. And then the parser itself, um, once we call GBA parser run, as you can see, it will just work on tokens, no longer on characters. So it will fetch the next token in our token sequence and then see what kind of token we have. There's a bunch of tokens such as new line, white space, uh, directive or identifier. So for example, if we have an identifier token, it will then try and figure out if this identifier token is uh, a label or if it is just a simple identifier. If it is just a simple identifier, we're gonna find out if um, this identifier is already in the symbols table. If it is in the symbols table, it can be probably a keyword or an alias or something like that. And if it is a keyword, we're then just gonna go ahead and pass the necessary keyword. And all these parse functions here for all these keywords, essentially also just work over tokens. It's all very similar. They all just um, fetch the next token, look what it is. Is it something that we're expecting? If yes, process, uh, process it and then write the output into the output file. If it is something that we don't expect, print an error, continue with the next line. Then after the file has been parsed, uh, I also have this little debug here where it just sets the header uh, data at the moment. Uh, then all that's left to do is basically writing the ROM into the output file that just essentially creates an output uh, ROM file, uh, dumps in all the bytes of this ROM buffer and then closes the file again. That's it. Now, if the parser ended with any errors, I have this final line that I print out, assembly failed with, uh, you know, these amount of errors, and then that's just it. That is the whole program. So one thing that I simplified a lot is uh, you see no free method here. I'm actually allocating memory but never freeing it because I'm using the heap that is associated with my process and when the process dies, so does all the memory that I have allocated. So there's actually no reason to free it. Now, but let me show you how it works. So there is this website called gbdev.io with some assembly tutorials and they have this hello world assembly file. And my goal was to just be able to compile this one. There were a few syntax changes like, um, so, their assembler that they're using for the file had these uh, square brackets for indirection, while the official game manual is using normal brackets for these indirections, uh, but I just boiled it down to one character, which is the star. But that is essentially the program, and now let's compile it. So as you can see, I have the program.gbasm right here, that is this file, which is where the hard-coded path points to. I start the assembler and that is it, it's done. Uh, don't pay attention to those debug lines here that don't essentially mean anything. It's just for me because I was debugging something and I was curious, so uh, for now just ignore that output. But here we have the program.gb file, as you can see, 32 kilobytes, which is the smallest ROM you can generate. And then you can open this file in the hex editor and then see, well, this is the header. This is where our program starts. This is the whole program output. And then there is the tail data that, that begins and the tile set down here. I have Visual um, Boy Advance, which is an emulator copied into this folder right here. And if we double click on this one, we can say open Game Boy and we can open the program.gb that we just generated. And there you go we have a Hello World application. I just successfully compiled Game Boy ROM with my own assembler. And that's about it for the assembler. So I, I, I'm really proud of what, what I got going there. Obviously there's still lots to do. I need like some command line arguments to have you know the input and output files not be hard coded. But that, that will all come in due time and hopefully you know I, can, I will be able to create a few things with that. That's about it. Thanks for watching, bye.